Xavier Lustig never met a cheese puff he didn't like. Are they good? Everybody calls him Chunker. He, he loves to eat. And he's not afraid to speak up when he wants more. Yeah. I wanted a little snack, and he wasn't looking at me like he wanted a little snack, so we ate some Cheetos before Mom got home. <laughs> Tried to clean it up, but we got caught. <laughs> <laughs> to Xavier's parents, crumbs are not a mess. They're a milestone. Xavier's a miracle. An absolute miracle. Xavier's appetite for life began much earlier than expected. I was 23 weeks, um, and the pregnancy was fabulous. I had maybe gained 10 pounds. I could go places and people wouldn't even know I was pregnant. He had just started to kick. Everything was going great. But kicks turned into cramps. The doctor had said, that's kind of normal, you could get the Braxton Hicks contractions. A few days later, Xavier sent his mom a message. He wanted out. And within the next hour, the cramps were happening every eight minutes and lasting anywhere from 45 seconds to a minute. Call the doctor and, and um, they say you need to go to the emergency room. Lauren needed medical attention from specialists in high-risk deliveries and premature babies. She was flown to All Children's Hospital, Johns Hopkins Medicine. All Children's is almost two and a half hours away from where we live and where everybody we love and our family is. All Children's is one of the only children's hospitals with babies born on the premises through Bayfront Baby Place. I jumped in my truck, so driving up there, it was all sorts of things going through my mind. It was a long drive. The labor team hoped for the best, but prepared for other possibilities. You know, the main thing that they said was, you need to keep, you need to keep the baby inside as long as you can. But Xavier couldn't wait. He was born at 24 weeks, about four months before his due date. He didn't cry like you, like you would normally hear a baby cry. He, it was just a, such a soft cooing. And when he was doing this, the entire room got silent. Xavier weighed less than two pounds. If you look like you could see through him. He could have fit in your hand. And he was hanging on by a thread. Well, when Xavier was born, he's at what we consider at the edge of viability. To look at the baby on the outside, they look like a fully developed in terms of, you can tell it's a baby, but all their organ systems are just very immature. And so they don't function at the same level that a full-term baby's organ systems would function. Xavier spent his first months of life in all children's level three neonatal intensive care unit, the most advanced care in Florida. We have all of the different specialists that any baby would need. Our neonatologists are the physicians um, that are in charge of the baby's care, so they're specially trained in neonatal care. Still, the NICU can be daunting to a new parent. Xavier was placed at the very back of the, at the room, by the window. So, in order to get to him, you had to, we had to walk by all of these other babies. And it was a very difficult walk to make. Every time during the day I walked down that hall, it was very difficult for me and I would cry. Sounds once unnoticed have new meaning. I just remember his monitors constantly going off. Every time he, he would desaturate, his oxygen level would go down. Beep, 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 beep. But in a moment, tenderness replaces fear. The first time I held him was with the kangaroo care when they slid him in my shirt. Every time I would hold him, I would fall asleep with him because it was like just comforting that I could hold him. The heat of the mom or dad keeps the baby warm um, and there's actually evidence that shows it's really good for babies and for their moms and dads. Love is a powerful drug, but these fragile fighters need more. At 25 weeks, there's still about 50% of those babies survive. All Children's Hospital is involved with research aimed at improving those outcomes. One study focuses on lung health. The purpose of this study was to look at therapies that might help prevent chronic lung disease in extremely premature babies. More than 500 newborns participated in the randomized study nationwide, 24 from all children's NICU. The study was out of University of California, San Francisco. 
Babies had to be less than 28 weeks gestation when they were born. They had to be between 7 to 14 days of age and still on the ventilator. Tiny participants were given extra doses of surfactant, a drug normally given to preemies to help underdeveloped lungs. The researchers felt that over time, still being on the ventilator, that the babies used up the surfactant. They weren't making it as well in their own bodies and then used up what we had given them. And your big old feet. And your lady friends. She's busy right now. Yeah, he's on a photo shoot. All right. The quest for better outcomes continues. The study results a few years away. Doing research in the neonatal population is very important because we're looking at not only helping these babies survive, but helping them survive better. Care that's appreciated. Come outside and go in the pool. Come on. He's doing amazing. He started off at one pound, 11 ounces, and he weighs 26 pounds now. I'm nervous he's gonna skinny up once he starts moving more though. Let's go swimming. There are so many things that we are so thankful for and we truly believe that All Children's had a direct hand in how well he's doing today. Come on, maybe you'll learn how to swim right now. Xavier began life against the current. He showed up when he wanted to show up. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if he was just interested in seeing what's going on. He got bored and just wanted to come out. So. <laughs> May each new discovery feed Xavier's insatiable curiosity for life.